We have MLS players, Cade Cowell, yes, and Brandon Vasquez, yes, heading down to Monterey and Chivas, respectively. And uh, what's interesting is that Cade Cowell just got his Mexican passport. He's a dual national. And I don't know if you guys saw this fit that he's wearing, but uh, it doesn't really give off vibes uh -oh. of this is one of the biggest moments in our life. I don't know. I don't know. It's it, this is all reported. If you're, if you're coming out as fit, it's got to be really. Well, which which part of it? He's wearing. I don't know. He's wearing Crocs with socks, which that feels like a tattoo oh, that's, already. That then sounds got, like Clint got, Dempsey right there. With, with, you talk, you're talking about are, socks and Crocs. That is Dempsey all day. <laughs> Uh, it reminds me of Serginho Dest wearing uh, a basketball outfit to Messi's retirement or leaving Barcelona. They were just like, I don't know if this really fits the situation, but Does whatever. Those you know, giblets? Does he have the giblets and the, the Crocs? I, I, you know what? We got to zoom in, I think, to see <laughs> for sure. But but he does have now the possibility of, of representing Mexico and now to play for Chivas, right? Because of the rules that they have in place that uh, only... Uh, Mexicans are allowed to play for their club. I think he would be, be excuse me, the, the first Amer Mexican American to play for Chivas, which would be history in itself and, and very cool for him. So let's just talk about this opportunity, Jesse, having MLS players leave to go play in, in Liga MX, which for me just feels like them going to Europe, right? You're getting out of your comfort zone or what you've known up, up until this point, and you're testing yourself somewhere else. So for me, this is this is a positive to continue to grow as a player, even though they're not guaranteed playing time, which I think they'll be hard pressed for Brandon Vasquez to get significant playing time initially at Monterey and then the same for Kate Cal at Chivas. I say, why not? You know, I, li I like that they're testing themselves and putting themselves in a, in a unique environment and challenging themselves to play at a higher level. Obviously there's always finances involved. And, and the one thing about Liga MX is, is that they have finances there. And so players can make a lot of money. Uh, it's a totally different style of a league. It's a, it's an intelligent league and a, and a league with a lot of technical ability. And those games are not easy and they're often very wide open and the weather is not, you know, you're playing at elevation, you're playing at heat. So there's a lot of variables for what that league is and what it means to the development of a player. But yeah, again, for me, I think each player has to choose his own endeavor. And when players want to try new things and test themselves and take themselves out of their comfort zones and the boundaries of what, what they have felt comfortable in, I, I say power to them, go for it. We're all with you. And then the question is, okay, how does it fit with the U.S. national team? I think what's interesting about this conversation, Chuck, and you mentioned before, MLS is a selling league. Should MLS be worried that we're losing some of our top players, some of our top young players in particular, to Mexico? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Vasquez had been, uh, it seems to me, looking to make that next step in his career, whether it was uh, Europe, which he's expressed uh, actually on uh, the Galazzo Network on Morning Footy that he wants to play in Europe. He still has ambition. But if if that's not happening, then guess what? You're still going to get a, a massive increase in, in salary and, and go to Monterey, which is a, a team that's second in Liga Amekis. So I, I think for a Brandon Vasquez, it's still a no-brainer. If you want to take another step in your career, Monterey to go play in Liga Amekis is, is still a, a great step for him. Um, and and in, in terms of Cade Cowell, he, he, he started with the U-20 uh, U.S. team in the World Cup. Uh, Still in MLS, not consistent with his, his final ball or or finishing. You, you, he has those intangibles you can't teach, the quickness, the, the toughness. You, you love those attributes that he has. But in terms of the technique and the quality in those final moments, the composure still needs to, to drastically increase to be effective with, with the U.S. men's national team, first team. And so, uh, again, from San Jose – to go to Chivas, massive step. So uh, I'm all for players taking steps to to get better, to to help push them in competition and, and training every day. Uh, Chicharito is also uh, rumored to be heading to Chivas as well. So he, massive, he, he, massive steps, a big big claim. I mean, I know the environment. Wait, that the, Chivas the in San Jose. That's not a massive step. 
I, mean, I, I, think, I think it is in 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 a lot of the intangibles. The 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 pressure is going to be obviously a lot different, right? You're, if you're walking around San Jose and you lost, probably not that big of a deal. But if you you know you lose the Club America and you're walking around where where you know Chivas in Guadalajara, yeah, you're going to be under it, you know. And there's a different type of pressure. So yes, there's a lot of different ways. It's massive. I'm I'm on the field. Do you think it's that? Big of a step. I don't. Yes. I don't necessarily watch yes. Chivas Guadalajara and think, "God damn, those guys are amazing." You know, I mean, they no, but, they, they but have do you some think players the in their moments where they're good. What's that? I think. Do you think the opposite when you look at San Jose? No, I don't think the opposite. Like, I don't oh. think the opposite. No, no, no. I don't look at the Quakes and go, "Okay, uh, they're awesome." Uh, the, right. You know, but but they're working towards building something. Obviously, under Luchi Gonzalez. I'm just saying that I don't think there's the level doesn't seem as big of a gap as maybe it once was, but in terms of everything else around it and in and, and terms of the growth of that pressure and those expectations and having to perform maybe at a level where he could feel comfortable knowing I'll probably get to play kind of regularly with San Jose. Cause we maybe don't have the depth cause we don't have the salary cap or he doesn't know that, or maybe he does, but that's not really his decision-making, but, but there's going to be more competition for spots, I think with Chivas. So again, that, that's another intangible, but in terms of the level, I think, I don't know. This is a this is a probably a whole separate you know, podcast. But... I, I look at it more as like a stylistically, what is it going to be like? Because the the league in in Mexico is very different than what it is in in MLS. But I, I think he he plays with power. He plays with aggressiveness. Yeah, he's a little bit reckless at times and not like always raw, perf- right? perfectly the technical player. Yeah, he can be a little bit raw. But for me, when I get young players, those are the kind of guys that I that I love to get. And those are the guys kind of guys that I love to work with because I think I can really improve their abilities, their intelligence, you know, and and you can see that the ma- upside is massive. So I've that's always, what, even when he was that's 16. Jesse, that, that's what you did with Erling Holland, right? Yeah, I, mean, that's, I mean, there's a lot no, of guys. Who, who, who is one player that you <laughs> got full credit that had him. those type of attributes, Jesse, that you thought, you know what? I, he's raw, but damn, he's he's got he's got a lot of things that you can't teach. I mean, there were a lot of those, you know, Erling was one of those guys. Uh, he Chan Wong, um, we had Benji Sheshko, the Slovenian that's now at Leipzig, Kareem Adeyemi, who's now at Dortmund, yeah, all cool. guys with power and speed. But when you first saw them, and you, if you put them through a passing exercise, you would think this is not a professional footballer. But then as, as time goes on, and now you see how they can apply their power and speed and strength, and you can give them clues as how to maximize what their potential could be, then you start to really have some fun. Right now you have something to work with and, and day after day, you really see maturity and you see development. And that's why when I saw Cade Cowell at 16, I was like, wow, I even he at New York Red Bulls when he was young, we were, I was asking, can we get this kid here? What, how, what can we do to bring him into a, what we think about football and see if we can help him mature? So, yeah, I mean, I, I think. It will be it will be a, a good test for him to see if he can understand culturally how the league works, how that how important that club is. But then I think his uh, the potential for him to go on the pitch and play against some smaller, given intelligent uh, Mexican defenders, but to use his power and speed to see how he can create advantages. I think it'll be really interesting to see how this works out. So you try well, to trade for him. I, yeah. I actually thought that Chuck was winning <laughs> yeah. on the flex department, but uh, I believe that Jesse has taken the lead here with uh, sure. all these names <laughs> that are being dropped. So it's a fair play to, to Jesse for taking the lead there. Oh, he oh, Chan Wong. He Chan yeah, Wong. Another he one. Chan, I said, okay, yeah, I game like, over. 